Good evening, viewers, and welcome to another week of Calypso Showcase. Tonight we feature one of the uncrowned kings of Calypso, a man with a unique style in the Calypso world. We're talking about Samuel Abraham. We call him in the Calypso world, the Lord Brigo. Brigo, welcome to Calypso Showcase. Well, I'm proud to be here. I always want to be here. It's one of my dreams that come true. I was wondering when I will be on Calypso Showcase. My first question is, where did you get the name Brigo? Oh, that was a name from boy days when I was about seven, eight years. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Shedrock called me one day, he hear me singing Calypso. He said, you know what is your name? I said, no. He said, you love Calypso? I said, yes, and I want to be a Calypso. He said, you want to be, you born a Calypso then. Your name is Brigo. So I asked him, what, what Brigo mean? He said, Brigo mean to sing Calypso. Brigo is Calypso and go clean, go tidy. And I just stay with that name. I go to school and I tell brothers when I ask them, what is your Calypso name? I say, Brigo. And it start from then on until now. From the age of seven to eight years. Brigo. What has Brigo been doing in 1992? We haven't heard much of you. Oh, 1992, uh, that's a nice question. Calypso, been, Calypso take a change, make a change in the era of 92. Before that, I should say. And I decide to go back into my archive of knowledge and try to change with the tide of time. And not only that too, I realize that today it becomes so competitive that you have to move with the tide of time generation. The young people, they want things to suit their world. And um, Calypso, it is something that you don't make now for now. You know, and I had us to go back to study the people. What is their problem? What is their cry? I had us to study what kind of music to make to suit this era. And that take time. And then besides that, I go through rough times in my Calypso world. Because a Calypso then cannot have children and he cannot be a housewife, a house husband, uh, take up domestic responsibility. Because Calypso is a delicate thing. It's the cry of the people. You have to tell them what's going on behind their back. You have to tell them what to expect in the future. A Calypsonian is somebody that compose and perform his work. That's a Calypsonian. A Calypso singer is the fellow that gets the song and sing it. They call him long time in the days a spoiler and melody and sagalba and small island pride and these guys. They call fellas like that a mocking pretender when you do compose, when you get song from somebody. Because they have to send you out to some university, some part of the world to lecture what, all on Calypso and your, your, your tradition of life in your country. If you're not a composer to pick up information from the masses, what are you going out there to say? Are we going to talk a little bit about something else that you've been doing in 92, which is the Brigos Cultural Theatre. But we're going to show first our viewers the life of Brigo in Calypso. Many of you will remember the Rolls Royce discotheque. This has been converted into the Abercrombie restaurant and bar where we meet today on Calypso Showcase, the Lord Brigo Samuel Abraham. Brigo, welcome to Calypso Showcase. Oh, it is a pleasure being in your company, and it's a pleasure being here to entertain the people, informing them, I should say. And um, I want to say that I was always waiting on this opportunity to give my story out to the people, to the masses, let them know all about Calypso, where it's coming, where it's going, my experience for the over the 30 years that I'm in the business. And um, I prepared to inform. All right, you said 30 years in the business, so I take it that somewhere in the 60s, your Calypso career started, 1962? I should say, I come into Calypso in 59. And uh, my first debut was at Palladium Theater. That is in uh, 63, 63. And um, in the 60s, I come into Port of Spain between 67 
68, 69. I sang at the Waldorf. I sang at uh, Duke Street, Good Samaritan Hall. And then we went to Seaman and Waterfront for the first time. That is where you have Calypso operating now in a big way. Those days it was the Blakey, the Cypher, the Commander, the Melody, the Sparrow, the Caruso, the Dougla, the Cristo, the Brigo. They didn't have any, anybody like Chalk Dust and Shadow and Francine and uh, there was Stalin. Stalin was around and Bryna disease was around and those are the years I come into Calypso. I have to pick up my information because as people know, Calypso is a self-taught thing. There's no college you go to to learn to sing Calypso. Well, let's start at the very beginning when Brigo was just a little poop, as we would say. What was your childhood like? Well, well, I had a rough time. It seemed like from young I'd been born a Calypsonian. Uh, when I was a boy, I remember, I loved Calypso. I used to do a lot of whistling and singing Calypso. And at that time, Calypso was an outcast. But you know, you're young, I didn't know. It just the music strike me and I feel good. And I, I always feel good when I hear it and whenever I sing it also. And my parents never wanted me to sing Calypso. They call it a, uh, a vagabond, a rogue, a, a scamp. We call it an outcast at that time. That's what the people say, that it, it, it's not a music that have anything to do with God. And um, for me to be a godly child, I, have not to, I must not sing Calypso. But while I'm growing older, I've been informed by the same Almighty that he is the first musician and he is the first creator. And I learned then that I was born to be an educator, an informer, an entertainer, and I know that is a Calypsonian. Well, what were some of the Calypsos that were being played when you were a kid? A uh, thing like, uh, Oh, lady, you imagine me do, oh, lady, you imagine me do, oh, lady, you imagine me do, oh, I want you to let me go. And a uh, Calypso like, Brown skin girl is a woman mine, baby. Brown skin girl is a woman mine, baby. I'm going away in a sailing boat. Even when I come back, throw it down, baby. That's how the gramophone used to play at that time. <laughs> Up and down. Up and down. <laughs> <laughs> and I had love it. And I, it's just strike. And then I realized that, that I am part of that. What school did you go to as a, as a youth? Uh, I go to boys' government school, that is at Arima. They used to call it ABG at the time. I never reached high, very high in school. My standard I reached in school was fourth standard at the time, fourth standard. But my parents wanted me to be an office boy or some big something, what they at the time look at was big. But uh, I saw mu the music world was my biggest world uh, and, um, in entertaining, educating, informing the masses like any preacher man in, 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 in that type of area like Calypso, I had loved that area up to now. I love educating, informing and entertaining. Which did, you, did you start as a youth um, dabbling, trying to write Calypsos or compose in any way? Yes, as a youth, I use it to compose Calypsos like um, uh, Mary, had, I used to do it in Mary had a little lamb form. Mary had a little lamb, a little lamb, a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, the sheep was white as snow. It followed her to school one day, school one day, school one day, follow her to school one day. It was against the rule. <laughs> now, I used to do it in that way. Oh, little boy blue, come blow up your horn. The sheep's in the middle, the cow's in the corn. Where is the boy that looks after the sheep? Yonder the hills drop fast asleep. <laughs> and that was to lead me into Calypso because it carried a Calypso rhythm, the mood of how I handle it. I mean, at that time, they didn't used to do it in Calypso, but I want it in Calypso, like ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. because Calypso is Nakato, which is pow, pow, like a punch, pam, pam. Anytime anybody saying Calypso, they don't have the punch, the phrase, and the, 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 the lines to protect the phrase, then you're not singing Calypso. Calypso is an is a art form that is a rhythm, it is a rhyme, and a story being told. When was the first time that you appeared on a stage singing Calypso? Uh, that is at Palladium Theatre, Tarapuna. Them days it was Spoiler, Melody, Sagalba, uh, 
radio, the uh, Cristo, nearly leave him out, and Commander and these guys. And I was just about, how old I was? About 16, 17 years at that time. And uh, I went up there and I sang a Calypso called Carmen and Elvira, want to play me guitar. I give them the guitar string, then I watch them how they play. Carmen took the high note, Elvira the low. Come and to Elvira, you better learn to play in G minor. <laughs> you understand? And um, I, I bust in the Calypso somewhere because the way I, I open my eyes and I take my mouth and the, the whole audience went mad laughing and I taking on the laughing and forget the other line that's coming up. <laughs> and I happened to bust, but I get a round of applause loud and Melody asked me to come to Port of Spain. Keep making Calypso, keep it up. You're going to make it big one day. Cypher tell me, he say, you are a king of Calypso. But you wouldn't know, you wouldn't see it now, but one day you will see what I'm telling you. So you made a trip down to Port of Spain, and how did your Calypso career move from then? Well, I, I misinterpreted the whole thing when I came to Port of Spain. I thought that when I have a Calypso, I break down the house, I get anything like a little five, six hundred dollars in them days. You know, I feel in then that. The whole of Trinidad love Calypso full, so they come out to Calypso, not to, the, to see the artists now. I think when they, they come to hear Calypso because it's our tradition, it's our music, it's our life, it's our everything. So I think, well, when I go out there, boy, I go make money like rain. It wasn't so. When I come to town, I sang get nice applause and thing and when we came up I could remember pretend I was the man that paying one dollar and fifty cents from Sunday to Sunday <laughs> yes, and, and I had to take the train the train was 12 cents the bus was 12 and I live in Tanapuna I had to take the train it had many nights I walk from Tonga to Tanapuna that's my secret but I know letting it go now tell me something, you know, getting in a tent and doing auditions and so on is something that every Calypsonian has to face. What experiences did you have in auditioning to get into a Calypso tent? Uh, the experience that I had in the days of audition, if you come and you don't have the authentic Calypso, which is the Calypso that tells the story of that slow beat, they're not going to accept you. You, you can't come with no up-tempo beat in those days. They call it concert Calypso. In them days, they had a bar across the stage and um, you have to sing over the bar. So that was theater, Calypso, Calypso losing its theater now. And that killed me, because here what killed me, the, 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 there is people that look for a certain type of Calypso, like if something happened with government, all the government Calypso going to Savannah, anything around government thing, anything that, um, uh, that is in the current time, but anything that humorous, go and get licks. Now, what was your first Calypso hit? My first hit was Don't Beat Mama Poop. But uh, no, do so I like so. I, I always say do beat my mama poop because I the public favorite. If I go anywhere to sing and I ain't sing that people just come come backstage and tell me what happened just give me that song next rounds. Yeah. So I just always call it first. But do so I like so was my first hit. Stop the lashing, you're coughing up your chest, boy, you're playing strong. Putting all the boys that we got in town. You're running down, Jane, you're running down, Joel. And I can't even comfort your wife at home. She talked to James, you want to kill. She talked to Shorty, you're crying and still. She walked out, you want to kill. She do it, look. Tell them, do so and like so. What experiences um, influenced your composing that particular tune? You sure like, so it's when I look around and see people telling people things, and when they tell them back things, they won't fight. And not knowing, there's a lot of people in this country don't know we are a Pekong people. That is what makes we unique. We try to live like other people do, but we run away from self. We are a Pekong people. Like, Brigo, you play your ugly, no boy? I can't look for a big stone to lick down the man. He could be testing my intelligence to see if I'm a really a Calypsonian bright enough that he could really follow me. Mm. You know, he said, big you play ugly now, open my eyes, I say, yes, boy. Mm. You know what I mean? He goes turn around laughing. But if I say, who ugly, and I, and I show him attitude, it means then that I'm not from here. Mm. This is the end of my Calypso. Remember, so you like so. Spread it up wherever you go. New York or Tokyo. Remember, 
Let's go to another hit of yours, Don't Beat Mama Popo. Uh, I think this is one of the tunes that all of your fans think of when they think of the Lord Brigo. Don't Beat Mama Popo. Don't Beat Mama Popo, I will sing a, a verse for you in chorus and then explain, right? It is really sad to tell you about the child days that Brigo had. You may say I'm mad when I tell you about the child days I really had. My mama have five children, I'm the better looking one. As you all could see, she used to beat me just like if I wasn't she son. One day granny said to she, Don't be mama bobo, don't be mama bobo. Granny tell she, I warn you already, like if you want to spoil the child, do you cheat? You don't make the picnic, and now you be in it like you crazy Betty. I love him a lot. He is the prettiest grand popo that I have. I see myself between all the Calypsonian as the most handsome Calypsonian, the real rockers, as they say, mm -hmm. or the Tony Curtis. I used to feel great when they announced me, and up to now, I feel I'm the, one of the best looking Calypsonian between all. And as a great creator in art, I am the best looking because. There is no other face like this, and anything that is unusual is the best looking thing. I sure you don't know, when I was small, I was a marasmi. Oh, oh. She got in me too, and a big head that really had me could grow. Yes, my mama used to let me sleep on the floor. From my head to my toe, they cover with saw. Because I was the best looking child among the rest. My mommy wanted to kill me with less. Don't be mama popo. Don't be mama popo. Granny tells she, I want you. Like if you want to spoil the child. <laughs> 